Hey everybody, welcome back. So uh, last video I made, I talked about death rates and beer. So the beer was the better part of the video, obviously. Uh, and I talked about death rates a little bit, and obviously that was that that came out to be true as we're seeing this week. Uh, death rates, of course, are skyrocketing. There's some very disturbing videos out there that's showing uh, what's going on in some of these countries. In particular, we're seeing, of course, Italy still having a lot of problems. And we're also seeing, of course, Spain, the death rates, I think in Spain went up, oh, hundreds in, in one day. So that, that's really disturbing, uh, but that's what we predicted, of course, right? So we're looking at what's, what's next. So what else did we see this week? We saw first responders dying. So that was uh, what we talked about in the last video. And that was very disturbing, but of course we knew we, we would be expecting that. We saw that in China, where we saw people getting exposed to the virus firsthand. The whistleblower, uh, you know, he was a prime example where he simply forgot to button his, uh, his uh, um, protective gear uh, one day and of course got infected and, and died. Young guy, right? So not, not an old person, no underlying conditions that I'm aware of. And then, uh, so of course, this week we see in the uh, UK, we see these young nurses that are that are dying, and there's pictures of them, and they looked really young. They looked, you know, 20s or 30s. So that's really disturbing, and we want to watch out for that. So you know, that's we expected that would occur, but now of course it's occurring, and and it's really hitting home now that that's what uh, that's what we're going to be up against. That's a real concern, right? As our first responders um, get sick, that's going to reduce our uh, ability to address this. So when we talk about flattening the curve, that's what we want to do, not only because of the capacity of the hospitals, the number of ventilators, the number of beds, but also just because we all these other peripheral things that we're not thinking about that we need to. And, and, and that's really the, the first responders, the nurses, the doctors, the surgeons, the specialists, all the people that are just like you and me that are going to get sick and need to take time off, uh, you know, that the amount of people available to do that is going to decrease, right? Uh, when we also look at it, the hospitals, I mean, they, I mean, the other peripheral things that are really concerning are all the people that need to go to the hospital, need to go to see their doctors because of the things that, that are not, not virus related, right? So if you're having a baby, if you have something where you need to, um, you know, treatment for cancers or any sort of serious illness, right? A lot of those things are getting put on hold because the hospitals are dealing with this. So we will see, we're not measuring the number of fatalities or complications due to that, but you've got to imagine that that's going to be significant. Imagine if you're, and, and many of you are, and, I, and I'm sorry if that's the case, many of you are, are in that category. There's a lot of people, I mean, once you reach middle age, there's a lot of things that can start slowing you down. And uh, cancers of all types, uh, all sorts of complications. So the treatment for the, all those things is gonna be problematic. So not only first responders having problems and then the amount of those people decreasing, but all these other things, right, that 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 we're used to just taking for granted and, and, and it being there. So, so that's gonna be an issue that I see in the not so distant future. That's gonna be uh, something that we'll have to work through. I, I see in, in some cases they're trying to bring people in that are retired, bring them back, uh, train people up. I think that, yeah, whatever we can do in that area is going to be uh, required. So we're definitely gonna, I think over the next five years, we're, we're definitely gonna have to scale that up. In the short term, I'm not sure how to fix that problem, but uh, that's something to watch out for. I see some terrible things happening in Ecuador. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about that. Um, I don't know if they're true or not. They're too horrific in, in my mind to be real, um, just how they're disposing of bodies and stuff like that, but they look real. So I think that the healthcare system in some of these places is just maxed out and, uh, and they don't know how to deal with it. So many of the things that we saw coming out of uh, China, we now see in some other areas um, and, and it's pretty horrific. And so, yeah, just, just terrible. And, I, and what I'm really worried about is Right now, what we see is in India, places like that, where we see very strict curfews, and 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 now we see some riding where the the, the people there are harming the uh, police and and the medical people. And uh, I saw a video where they're throwing rocks at them and stuff like that. 
and I saw a statistic. It was it said four four hundred and seventy million, four hundred and seventy million. That's a that's a huge number. Laborers in India. So those are people that are um, now unemployed, right? So those are the people doing crops and you know food supply and stuff like that that we rely on for our food, um, and not not just in India but but all over. But it looks like they are now unemployed. Basically, I mean, there's there everybody's supposed to be at home, and um, so that's a problem, right? You have all those people that are now trying to get food and get money, and I think a lot of those people are probably living day by day. So that's not a problem for you and me today, but it will be tomorrow, right? As this trickles through, the whole food supply thing, which I want to talk about in a minute, is I think going to be a medium term problem. But uh, before I get to that, um, other things I saw was we're, we're trying to protect the gateway to many places like going into stores and stuff like that with temperature testing. And I, I kind of view temperature testing as ridiculous as saying don't wear a mask. So the CDC recently said, oh, actually, actually, now that we're, you know, 50,000 people dead and a global recession, uh, you, you know, now we're kind of thinking that maybe you should wear a mask. What? Like totally too late CDC. To me, CDC is right off. I know there's probably a lot of good people that work at CDC. So I'm sorry to you, but your company, your organization is a complete sham, right? Complete sham. But I mean, if you, even if you ignore the, uh, the investment from China in the CDC, if you ignore the, uh, all the bad reputation that it's had over its history, uh, as far as all the things that are in the news, if you ignore, even if you ignore all that, I think it's safe to say that they've contributed to death, disease, and suffering of the global population due to their poor recommendation and guidance, right? I mean, it's it's scientifically proven that wearing a mask is beneficial. Don't even don't even say don't even talk about the proper uh, PPE protocols, right? Because there's a lot of criticism about well, if you don't handle the mask when you take it off properly, you're going to cross contaminate. Yeah, sure. But train people on how to do that rather than telling them not to wear it. Now, of course, they're saying because the rest of the world, this is the, this is the thing, actually, this is the important point, point of this. So the CDC, I think, would have continued to say, don't wear a mask and give you bad guidance that would have possibly killed you. Uh, but I think what we're seeing is in other countries like Japan and, and other countries, Singapore, where they wear masks, like they're they're used to these sort of viruses, uh, so they they're used to wearing masks, even for pollution and other things like that. So they're very, it's part of their culture almost to wear the the mask. Uh, so it's not a big deal. Where in North America, there's huge stigma around wearing a mask. If you wear a mask out in public, people look at you like, what's going on, right? Uh, when I wear my mask, even now I get looks. So so culturally, we'd have to make an, a, a, a change here. But there, it's it's second nature. It's not a big deal. So they were wearing masks, and when you look at, when you graph the chart for infections and deaths, oh, their lines are flattening out. Well, why is that, right? So we're all doing this social distancing, apparently, uh, quarantining and all that. The big difference is they're wearing masks. So if the whole world, I mean, I think that, of course, yes, I'm not denying physical distance is, is actually better, but wearing masks would, would definitely enhance that whole thing, right? Because there's a lot of times where we're, we're not having adequate distancing. And I think the, the one meter mark that they're advertising is not sufficient, of course. Um, and there was some debate about it being airborne, which is crazy because we knew in December it was airborne. <coughs> and there's states, there's governors in the states that are just this week or last week saying, oh, I, I didn't know it was airborne. Like, hello? So no excuses there at all. So I think that that's, uh, that's all ridiculous. So I was talking about the wearing the masks thing and the failure of the CDC to give proper guidance because I wanted to compare it to taking temperatures. That's my phone. <sighs> Sorry about that. I should turn that off before I hit record. Anyway, so wearing a mask is good. Taking your temperature and, and, and anybody who tells you otherwise, get them to go Google it and, and read some reviews. But then taking temp taking your temperature and saying, uh, you know, we see this in airports, we see the thermal cameras in airports, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think cool technology. Uh, if it was effective, I, I would say that's awesome. But it's, of course, not because there's two problems. Uh, and the first problem is that you're you're not 
necessarily having a temperature. You're not necessarily showing any symptoms of being infected, and yet you're able to pass it to other people during that time. So you, you let's say I'm infected and I'm going through the airport or I go into your store or something like that. You're not going to know. I'm not going to know. And there's a, it's, some people are saying there's a 40, 48 hour window where you're contagious and there's no signs or symptoms. So your thermal temperature checker on me is, is not effective. If I am already sick, let's say, and, and maybe, I, maybe even I know I'm sick, let's say, and I take some Tylenol, now again, my temperature's going down, your temperature check is not gonna pick it up, right? So the only time the temperature check is gonna work is if I'm full blown sick and I'm not taking any Tylenol, which I'm gonna be at home in bed anyway, right? So, you know, I think, sure, sure, let's do the temperature check. There's no harm in it, just like, you know, I wouldn't say don't do it. I think it's, I think it's a good level, an extra thing to persuade people or to, um, to yeah, persuade people not to go out if they're sick, right? So they, they know they're gonna get checked. So they, they're, if, if they don't feel quite right, if they're starting to get something they think, then it's better just to stay home and send somebody else, right? So, so I think from that perspective, it's good, but it's marginal. It's not stopping people from, from being sick and spreading it when they're, when they're not, don't have any symptoms. And that's the big thing, right? I think a lot of people uh, are talking about, well, only wear a mask if you're around somebody that's sick or put the mask on the person that's sick. Assume right now that everybody is sick because many of them are and you just don't know. So that's, that's the big thing about this virus, right? Is that you've got the two week period where it can incubate or up to two weeks and you don't know. And then all of a sudden you have symptoms. So I think the only thing you can do that makes any logical sense to me is to assume everybody you have contact with is infected, right? I think if you're living like me, I live in this house with other people and we don't leave the house right now. When we go out, I'm wearing all full PPE gear. I'm wearing a gas mask, gloves. Uh, when I come home, I discard all my clothes, put them in the laundry, have a shower. So I feel pretty good about that. I clean everything that comes into the house very well. <clears throat> and, and so it's, I feel good that I'm not contaminating the family. But uh, anybody on the outside that I come in contact with, I'm assuming that they're infected. Doing a temperature check of them and then going, oh, no temperature, I guess you're not infected. No, that, no, right? That makes no sense at all to me. So much like the, the guidance of, of not wearing a mask made no sense to me at all. And of course now it's been proven pretty, pretty obviously that you should do that. So we're seeing a lot of people now make masks at home, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think that that's, uh, that's great. We're seeing... Uh, industry now getting forced to make masks, and I was watching on the news the uh, the the Trump uh, um, news release or, new, or press release yesterday, and I have to say that I was actually Im impressed by what I saw during that uh, news release or press release rather. And Trump was up there, and, and quite often people will ask him questions that he doesn't really have an answer to, and he will kind of give an answer that doesn't make any sense. Um, and so, you know, he gets criticized quite a bit for his, his responses to technical questions like that, I think. But this time what he did is he was bringing in the experts and he'd say, well, yeah, let so-and-so answer that. And he'd bring them in. It's like, great. And the answers were actually not too bad. And then he got asked questions about trade, about how he's closed the border and he's not providing any more medical gear to some other countries because he wants to, um, he wants to distribute them in country and how he accepted a bunch of medical gear from Russia. So he, he handled that excellently, excellent, excellently. He handled that very well. He said, yeah, I accepted them from Russia. Uh, it's going to save American lives. Yeah. So, you know, I think there's all this conspiracy theory about, well, now he's in Putin, Putin's bad back pocket and all this stuff. He's like, what am I going to say? No. And, and, and Americans are going to die because we don't have the, enough equipment. So he was, he was man enough to admit, look, we need equipment. They're giving it to us. I'm going to accept it. And I don't, I don't think there's any sort of geopolitical risk there, right? I, I, I think that at this point, that's the type of leadership that we need is we need people that are going to attack this virus and, uh, and take the measures that we need to do to do that, right? So what we want to do is we want to flatten the curve. We want to protect people's lives, especially our seniors, and we want to get the economy going again so people can get back to work. And he's going to do, you know, this week I see him 
and, and the people down in the States doing some activity that I think is, is moving in the right direction. So yes, there's tons of stuff that's still bad. Um, but I just, I t this week I saw a glimmer of hope at the leadership level, which I thought was pretty cool that I hadn't really seen before. So see a lot of cool stuff coming out of the New York leadership as well. And, um, and so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that crazy stuff on the boat, uh, on, on the Naval ship. Um, and that, that's a bit of a disaster, but hopefully they'll get that resolved. So, so what to expect with the food going forward? That's the uh, title of this. Um, you know, we see all the migrant workers not going to work. We see farms shutting down. We see farms in Australia saying that, yeah, we're just going to skip this year. And I think at an individual level, when you look at farmers making that decision on any given farm, any given farmer, you see that and you're like, yeah, sure. That's your choice. I don't know how you're going to feed your family or because you're not going to make any money this year. So as long as they have savings, sure, why not, right? But when you then multiply that by across the whole world, like this is global, right? Like I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around that personally. And I like to think I can wrap my head around a couple of things, but like the whole world is shutting down. And, and when you look at most things we can do that with, right? So when we look at some of the things that really worry me and keep me up at night, are nuclear reactors and things like that. And I think like, if nobody's looking after that, that's like a, that's a bad, bad thing, right? I want people like oiling the gears and like cleaning the dust off of everything and every nuclear reactor. Like I, I those things freak me out, but, but that, but so I think that's going to keep continue to work and everything's going to be fine there. I have a lot of faith there, but what, what worries me now is that if there are people out, aren't out in the fields picking potatoes and picking berries and putting those in the cans and shipping them to me. Well, that's going to cause a couple things. That's going to cause a food, sh food shortage over time. That's going to also make any food that is available go up in price a lot. Right? So every country looks like they're basically doing this. We see uh, in Canada, I saw signs of it. India, I saw signs of it. Australia, I saw signs of this in, in the news. And you can Google it, like go out there and take a look at this. So, and we're talking about millions of migrant workers, uh, you know, the 470 million just in India, like that's a huge number, right? And that's just India. So I'm a little bit worried about that. So it's not going to hit us right now. This could be, you know, a month or two, or maybe even six months down the road, because we're looking at the harvest for this year and we're in the very early part of the year. So I, I fully expect some sort of impact there. What is that going to look like? Your guess is as good as mine, but if we do the math on it, if we take a quick look right now and we know that the migrant workers aren't working right now, and now is the time when you're kind of starting and they're not going to be working for at least a month. Some farmers have given up already. So even, even if we just get going today, right, which we're not going to do, but even if we get going today, some farmers have already made the call and are like, they're, they're out. They're like, this year is right off not doing it. So they're going to fire up the Netflix and I don't know, right? Relax, have a beer. But so what we're going to have, we already have a percentage of them doing that. So that means food prices should go up because of demand and supply, right? <clears throat> so that's, that's, I would say definitely going to be a problem of some type. So I think we can establish that. How big will the problem be? I think we need to watch and wait over the next, over the next month, we should get a pretty good idea of what that's going to look like. So we know that problem is going to exist. And, and there's going to be a bunch of other problems, too. I think that many of the things that we see out there uh, like this, there's, this is not the only one. There's going to be other things as well, other behaviors that are going to change. So what do you do, right? As an individual, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's a problem. How? Do, what's the solution? And I think that you know, of course, we want to build up our food supplies. And I'm not advocating going out there and filling up your garage or your storage area with rice and beans. You know, I just think, well, first of all, if you're going to get sick of eating rice and beans, but I think we have to diversify, just like you're building your investment portfolio, right? You want to diversify. Oh, we're getting some good chat there. Hey, everybody, glad you could make it. Just going to read through this real quick. Um, yeah, so deli food delivery is is excellent. I think that's a that's a great idea. As long as the supply chain is still there and they have to supply their their delivery seniors that I advise not to go out in public. So just if they can stay home, if you've got older parents or grandparents, 
they shouldn't be out there shopping. I know some of the stores are out there and allowing them to go in early, but uh, I, I don't recommend that. I just think it's too high of a risk for seniors. So if they can get food deliveries or if you can deliver for them or they can do that sort of service, that'd be great. Hey, somebody from Wuhan, China, that's awesome. So that's uh, now the locust and uh, next it'll be flooding. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy out there, folks. So what, what do we do? So building up the pantry, I was talking about diversification. <clears throat> so I, this is how I would approach the problem. We're not quite sure what's going to happen, and um, but we need to try to solve that problem. So that what we saw in December, right, and we talked about this, is we saw this coming. We knew this was going to hit. We knew what it was going to kind of look like. We knew we needed uh, PPE, we needed personal protective equipment. So a lot of us went out there and bought some masks. We bought some gloves. We stocked up on certain things that we knew were going to get sold out and become way overpriced very quickly. So I think the, that will, of course, happen with some of these other things like food. So we want to be one of that. We want to have that first mover advantage a little bit and be able to stock up on some of these things. When gas prices were low, I went out and filled up a bunch of jerry cans with gas, uh, and now it's going up a little bit. So whenever we can take advantage of the problem like that and and prepare for the future. I would highly recommend that. So uh, I would build up your pantry slowly over time. You don't want to spend all your money and just go out and buy a whole garage full of rice. I would do it bit at a time while the prices are where they're at and buy things that will keep, of course, canned goods, rice, flour, that sort of stuff. I would also start saving your money and don't overspend on luxury items right now. I would save money because food prices will go up. Right. When we look at, I mean, there's going to be a, a maybe let's say, say it's not a terrible sh shortage and we can still get food. And I, I think that that's probably going to be the case where it won't be where we won't be in a state where we're going to we're going to get rationed so much like wartime. But I do think that at the very least, we'll see a, a pretty big cost increase. And actually, we've already seen it right over the last month. We've already seen prices in just normal food go up quite a bit. So I would expect that to continue. How much more? I would think that at least doubling, uh, probably substantially more than that, right? So if your food bill today is $200 a month, it would be way over $400 a month uh, in the next few months, I would guess. So I could be totally wrong on that. I'm not an expert in this, but just looking at the at, at what we've seen so far and, and some common logic, that's what I would expect to see. So save some money. Don't spend on fancy stuff. Uh, you know, none of us are traveling, going on holiday right now. So that's probably, um, probably a good thing to do. Uh, oh, I see some more comments here. Heard about the actual American first move or master paid and ordered for Europe trip, but brought out by the U S and transit. So, no, I haven't seen that. I have seen a lot of stuff where, um, in the U S they promised to deliver some masks to, uh, Spain and Italy, and they did ship those out, but now they're saying, okay, now we're done. We made the promise to ship those. Now we're going to stop. Um, so I did see that. Um, yeah, so triple the price of eggs, right? And so that's three times as much. So when I say doubling, maybe I'm underestimating. I think tripling is not out of the realm of possibility at all. So we could continue to see that. So it's tripled over the last month for eggs where you are, Andre. I could see that happening again. Definitely where I am, the price of eggs has gone way up if you can even find them. So over the last month, many of my friends have said they've gone to the store, they couldn't even buy them. So simple supply and demand, you can crank up the price, right? In some countries, I know they're not allowing uh, companies to increase the price like that, but definitely here in Canada, they've increased the price. And I would just expect that to continue. So our strategy, build up your pantry. That's always a good idea. If you've got some room, do that. Buy foods that you will eat. So this is always the thing for me. If I if I go and buy foods that I won't eat, then it's it's painful to not now to eat it, right? And then it's going to go bad if I don't eat it. If things get, get back to normal sooner than later, I got all this junk that I never want to eat. So for me, I try to buy a lot of whole foods. I try to buy things that are really healthy or cure disease, but I definitely think it helps with your 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 immune system and things like that. So we've got that going on. Um, you know, I was holding up my carrots in the in the picture for this video. Um, I bought a box of these and uh, onions, carrots, potatoes, um, those sort of foods. They keep for a long time in my garage, so you can I can keep those in there for a month or so. 
canned foods, dried foods. Um, yeah, so that sort of stuff uh, I would definitely do. So build your, build up your stocks a little bit as much as you can um, before it goes so much higher in price. The other thing that I'm doing, and, and not all of you will be able to do this, but I would recommend that that wherever possible, take a look at, can you grow your own food, right? Can you have a small garden? Now, I have a very small backyard, which is right there. And I, I have a couple raised beds, which is not a lot of room. I Even with all of that, I don't have enough room to grow enough food or, or diversity of food to really uh, be able to feed me and my family. Of course, that's it's just not going to work, right? But I could grow enough to just help out a little bit, right? Because already the what I'm going to buy now is going to be so much more expensive. If I can grow some food for free, that's going to help. So if you live in an apartment, if you have a balcony, that might be a good spot to do it. But, you know, gardening is definitely going to be uh, one option for people. The other thing which is kind of similar to that is if you live in a place where there are farms nearby, this sometimes works very well, is to simply phone the farms and say, hey, do you sell direct? And I think at this point in time, some of them may actually want to do that. And maybe not even a farm, but any distributors or uh, shipping people that ship food, anything like that, I would be phoning them and say, hey, do you sell direct? Because I've seen in um, some videos and some research, research that I've done is people are destroying product because it can't go out the door because of some shipping issues and stuff like that. So I would think that if you're going to give out cash for food, some of these places, especially the farms, may be open to that. Definitely in this area, uh, they definitely do. So we're able to pick up um, fresh meat and vegetables and some fruit in the summertime. So I think that that to me is one of the, I mean, everybody's going to want to be doing that very soon. So you want to establish those relationships as soon as you can. And even without the pandemic, that's a great thing to do because you're supporting your local farmers. It's actually quite often very good food. So that would be something to do as well. So uh, save your money. So I talked about that. Um, we want to have money available. Uh, I wouldn't be going out buying a brand new car necessarily this month, right? For a couple of reasons. One is like everybody's job is on the line, right? It's, it's if you're working for a company, especially, I think, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the next few months. And we're going into this crazy time where everybody's downsizing. So I wouldn't do it for that reason. I would also not do it because my, my, daily or my monthly living cost is about to go way up. So my food bills and many other things are probably going to go way up at this point. Um, gas is still pretty good, but, uh, but who knows? The other thing that I would recommend for food, because now we want to, we're trying to diversify it and get as many paths for good, cheap food as possible. The other thing to do is start looking for food groups in your area. Go online, Google it for local groups that go out and order big packages of food. So they can do that from the manufacturer or from the distributor or from the shipping companies. And they can do it as a large group. So they're going to get a good deal. And usually it's a much cheaper price. And usually the quality is, is quite good as well. So that may or may not exist where you live because I, I know all of you are around the world. But it, where I am, I, I do it. And my wife found it actually. And the food is perfect. It's great. Fantastic quality. It's about half the price. And so I think as we go into more and more expensive food, that's something definitely worth looking at. So, uh, so those are my suggestions on what we're about to run into. And we still have time. I think we still have, you know, I think before the, the food, food issue hits us, we've got at least a month, I would think probably a couple months, I, I would, I would hope, but this is moving so fast. Even, even I didn't predict that that it would move this fast. So those are some some recommendations. If you've got other recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Please put them down below. Just gonna catch up quick here on the comments. Um, so some masks, yeah, a lot of people making masks. France and Germany, definitely see a lot of activity there. I have close friends in Paris and uh, they're busy making masks and a great job. I think that's one of the best things we can do. See some of those people making them for first responders. And, uh, and I know some of those first responders are very grateful for, for that work that's going on right now. Um, yeah, in Germany, food prices are going up slowly. And uh, yeah, I see that. Thanks, Eight Rocks. Um, yeah, so you can slowly buy food as you go out and are able to get that food. Uh, Andre says, uh, New York, Queens, 
some things are decently priced, but Outbreak, everything else has gotten expensive. Yeah, I would expect that too. Yeah, so 8Rocks says, uh, especially those shields supported with 3D printers. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant too, right? We definitely see some great innovation out there where people are, are, are doing things like that. I saw them not only making the face shields, but also there was um, some, some of the ventilators, uh, or sorry, respirators uh, were being made with the 3D printers, with the valve and everything. So I think that's uh, excellent work. So fantastic. So that was, um, oh, what's that? I've seen 60 pieces layouts. Yeah, yeah, that's no, great, it's great. So we'll see more of that. What I've seen also is GM now is gonna be making uh, products and uh, a lot of the car companies, um, GM, Ford, that was it, um, a couple other ones too. I forget all the ones that I saw, but, but yeah, yeah, everybody's shifting now. And I think part of that's being mandated in the US as part of the um, the new policy that Trump put in. But but that's what we need. We need to ramp up as quickly as possible. So that's it for me. That's uh, We're 30 minutes already, so I don't want to go too long for you guys. But uh, tomorrow I want to talk a little bit more about uh, what we can do to stay healthy. Uh, I, a couple of people have asked me about that. I, I did one video already about immune system and supplements and stuff like that. But I want to get into that in a little more detail and not just focus on supplements, but uh, just talk about overall different things that we can do to stay healthy. And if we do get infected, which most of us will at some point, we want to have the 80% experience, not the 20% experience. Uh, what time will I be on? Um, I'll try to do about at the same time. How's that? So it's uh, 6, 10, my time, PM on Pacific. So I'll shoot for uh, 5.30 PM tomorrow. And I'll, I'll try to schedule it. So if you're subscribed to this channel, uh, you should get, uh, or if you hit the little bell, you'll get a, an alert when I'm on and uh, I'll, I'll do that. So if you're not already subscribed, that's a great idea. And um, it, especially if you like a video as well, if you like it, it kind of tells me what con kind of content you guys like. So I'm happy to do that. So I really appreciate all the feedback that you've given me and uh, and guidance. So yeah, so tomorrow I'll be talking about that. Thanks a lot, you guys. Um, stay safe and uh, safe travels. See you later.